Welcome back uh, to every, everybody. Welcome back to this uh, first uh, talk of the, this uh, second section of the day of track one. We are going to have this uh, first talk that is taken by Christoph Answer. In uh, the talk, uh, I remind you to you that every time you have, you have questions, doubts, or any, or any comment about the talk, go immediately on, on the pad, go check, try and make your question on the pad, not wait to the end of the, of the, of the talk, but when you have the, the question, wrote it in the pad. So uh, the, the talk will be taken by Christoph Anser, that is the president and co-founder of the NGO uh, Trophy Association. And the talk will focus on the, the use of uh, one of them, uh, of the application that they developed that is called Trophy App in uh, emerging countries. The state of the map participants. My name is Christoph Hanser. I'm from the Trophy Association International NGO, working with public transport. And I'm very happy that I can show you within our session that with the help of OpenStreetMap, how you can publish a multimodal journey app for the public transport in your city. We've created um, this app for informal transport. Uh, informal transport means no official stops, no schedules, bus lines are not documented, agencies run the bus lines, and I, I would say it's in the majority of the world public transport looks like this, looks informal, um, or maybe semi-formal, which is like a mixture where you have maybe formal transport such as a metro um, or official bus lines mixed uh, with informal transit. Um, where I live in Germany, it's public transport is very formalized. Um, but I also used to live in Bolivia, where you have where trophies that you can see on the screen um, are mainly running on the streets. Um, and in most of the cities of the world, especially in Middle and South America, Africa, Eastern Asia, public transport is informal. Why why is it important to have um, digital solutions for this kind of transport. Um, it is because also um, people in the in countries with um, public this kind of public transport, mostly in development countries, they also want door-to-door -door journey planners. They want to have more reliability within the public transport um, because and cities also want this because public transport protects the environment because less people buy their own cars, use individual transport. Um, so it's really good to make public transport stronger and it becomes more attractive if you have, if you can, if you know better uh, which route to take, um, when the next bus is coming, um, what the rates are for, for a trip, like all these kind of things that mobility as a service um, can bring. As Trophy organization, our main product is the Trophy app. It's open source. Um, it works white label, which means that you can easily, or not easily, but you can bring it to your own um, country. You can localize it. Um, so each app is different um, or is working with a different city, but they all fork out of tro our trophy app. It's multimodal, which means um, that uh, it's also working uh so that you have door-to-door -door navigation um, and you have all other means of transport. Um, and it's a journey planner, which says how you get from A to B. Um, it's open source, released under a GPL license on GitHub and um, has different features. Um, the red bottoms um, is the full door-to-door -door navigation, um, the GPS location, so that it easily shows you where you are right now suggests multiple routes. Um, it also suggests street names, crossings, points of interest. That's very interesting for informal transport because we figured out that most people uh, look for crossings or intersections. So they would look, um, I want to go to the place where the um, Eruinas is crossing um, the Ayacucho app, uh, the Ayacucho street. So people because there are no official stops, so they navigate to intersections. 
And um, this is something we've built into the app that you can search for crossings. Um, you can save preferred routes um, and other typical features that you know from journey planners. Um, the yellow points on the right side, they are rather technical. So it's built on Flutter um, so that it's um, directly usable on Apple and on Android phones. Um, it works also with older phones, which was very important for us because we our solution is mainly working in development countries. Um, routes can come from OpenStreetMap, obviously also from other providers, but OpenStreetMap is our preferred thing because it's open data. You can add your own languages like Quechua in Bolivia or Amharic in um, Ethiopia so that people um, can easily use it and actually feel proud to use it. In our development, uh, we go along the digital principles, um, if you know them, um, to make this really sustainable and helpful in the long run. Our team is global, but we really rely on local communities. Um, this is a picture from our annual meeting that we had last week um, with people from yeah, several continents. and. Um, we are experts on transport, on development, or like developers, software development, community managers, marketing people. And we are all working voluntarily right now. Actually, one of the goals that we have is get a, a good funding um, so that also some people can pay it and work a bit more reliable on the project. Um, and this is the global team. But we also really need local communities because the best public transport app is nothing without really good local data, local bus routes. And on this screen, you can see from, for example, Leonardo from Duitama, um, Luz and Samuel from Cochabamba, um, David uh, originally from Addis Abeba, um, and other people from, uh, that are from communities and, uh, and really help us. Um, so it's really a mixture. We are global. We have global team, but also local communities. What is Trophy Association? It's a non-profit um, startup for informal public transport. Um, non-profit means we are a registered um, NGO, registered in Germany. Most members are in Germany and South America right now, growing in Asia and Africa. Um, uh, and um, We've started the project in May 2018, and after a go live in Bolivia first, we saw that this kind of app is useful for many other countries as well. So we founded the NGO in April 2019, Wine NGO. Uh, we actually all did this for fun uh, and to do something good. Um, uh, so we said, best thing is if we go open source, use open data, um, and just um, help communities worldwide to, to adapt and localize the app in their countries. Um, that's why we then basically started the NGO to have a legal organization um, for doing something good. Our mission as NGOs is to improve public transport worldwide through digitization. And the vision is that um, people in development countries would have the same positive um, uh, usefulness of public transport like they have in, for example, my country, Germany, um, so that they would know when is the next bus coming, what's now the best option, um, and that public transport gets attractive and people really like to use it. Impact is that we build OpenStreetMap communities, train them, uh, that we make the data publicly available on OpenStreetMap. So maybe that's a good moment to open OpenStreetMap for your city and just check transport layer. Um, if you have, if, if you have a, a good information on bus routes, um, then uh, we publish the app uh, to find good door-to-door -door connections. And then we help cities finally with the information uh, from the searches. We can, for example, easily tell them uh, when the app is yeah, giving bad results. So if I move from one part of the city to another, when do I have a bad connection? So where would a new bus line make sense? Um, or where maybe are too many bus lines? Um, 
working on the same in the same area. So um, this is something where we really want to help cities. Um, products in the beginning, we had the Trophy app um, as our main product. Uh, it's still the main product, but we added some more products. One is the driver app for the drivers that I will show in a second. Also dashboard for cities and agencies so that they know where the buses are at the moment. Um, tools for transit data um, that uh, translate OpenStreetMap to GTFS. Um, or that check OpenStreetMap uh, bus lines if they have errors or if they um, if they are working well. Um, and we have a documentation uh, on how to um, do route mappings because it's not an easy thing. Um, yes. On the service side, uh, we are implementing Trophy App Fork, so we are helping as well to bring it to cities like we've did for Addis Abeba, Accra, Duitama. Uh, we're training local teams. We are maintaining bus routes and open street maps. So we're not only doing the initial work um, of, of putting them to open stream, we also have a maintenance, um, maintain them. This is done with uh, ground truth data, sort of. Uh, people can enable tracking um, if they say a line is missing or it's wrong. And we collect uh, these GPS snippets that we get. And if we have enough GPS snippets for a line, um, we use this data and um, adapt OpenStreetMap bus lines. We also, another service is a data platform for a better public transport planning for cities. You use the Drive app, uh, where a driver can just say, I'm going this route now. Um, the driver is sharing GPS coordinates in that moment so that we know where the buses are. We can tell the user. Uh, when the next bus is coming, um, so the driver has an incentive to maybe uh, an incentive of uh, winning more passengers because passengers know where he is, and um, he can also indicate or she when the bus is full. This was especially important during social distancing time because of COVID. Uh, so we said, okay, we want to know where the full buses are because we can calculate then how full is public transport in a city right now, the network, how full is it or how full is a line so that the user can design, decide if 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 she he wants to use now public transport or rather wait for two hours when less people are on the bus. Uh, we had a wonderful trophy app hackathon to create these features against COVID-19 and the video can sh uh, tell it much better than I could. So I want to show that. Video. Have fun. Trophy is a multimodal journey planner for semi formal public transport in big cities. It is scalable to any world city, even where there are overlapping decentralized transport networks. The app can be localized for the language of the users. In Ethiopia, it's called Yene Guzo, which means my trip. Thirty-five volunteers in ten countries and seven time zones held a hackathon to kick off an ambitious project to turn the open source Trophy Journey Planner app into a social distancing tool for public transport. The contributors are software developers, designers, and experts in international development. I'm actually the coordinator of the Driver App team. I'm working today in the Facebook bot for the Trophy App. I'm Sandra, one of your new UX designer. Bus drivers will have an app to report the occupancy of their vehicles in real time. With the current situation, we took into consideration the social distancing. Therefore, we added some features where a driver can say if the bus is actually full or it's empty. Commuters planning their trips can see this real-time information in the Trophy app and plan the best combination of routes to minimize exposure. The Ethiopia Ministry of Transport is interested in these features as soon as they can be launched. Especially in this COVID time, the problem that we face is that, you know, 
we don't have a kind of system that tells to the people that which bus come at this time. And also we don't have a kind of cashless payment system. In cities like Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, the TRUFI capabilities will represent a leap forward. One thing that we're learning from the COVID situation is that you really need digital transit data during these times, especially when, when you're trying to communicate to the mass and the public about any changes that are happening. When we go, to, you know, a, sh- a chance to have this trophy application, we can make easily the uh, transport planning, public transport optimization, and also, you know, accessibility analysis and development of innovative application could be, you know, easily accessible and good for us. The results of the Trophy app hackathon were a proof of concept. Municipalities around the world want these features for their citizens. The social distancing features of the Trophy app can make public transport safer anywhere in the world. Yeah, thanks for watching the video. Um, I hope you understood a bit more of Trophy and where we work with. It was actually very cool to talk with transport authorities in Accra, Addis Abeba, Antananarivo about what they do against COVID and how our app could help. Uh, and we really hope to win a funding now to make um, the real apps out of the proof of concepts. Good, so trophy apps are right now in Bolivia, Colombia, Ghana, Ethiopia. Um, they all look slightly different, have different languages, different colors, different name. They are their own entities or you, you separately download them in, in Apple Store and Google Store. And um, that you, you could be the fifth. <laughs> um, and that also means um, there are people that have already done it. Um, so you can also ask them how they did it. And obviously we can help you as an NGO as well. Uh, so we expanded to these four cities and we are, have pilots released um, in La Paz and Manila. And we are discussing with some other cities right now um, if the app should go there. I think um, Kampala is missing. I hope someone from Kampala is, uh, is watching. Um, and besides that, it's Antananarivo, Dar es Salaam, Nairobi, Managua, Hyderabad, Kathmandu. And yes, we are ready to expand Trophy to much more cities. Trophy made news also locally. Uh, we were very happy when the Tr- Ministry of Transport announced uh, the Negusu app um, in, on television. And uh, we were very happy. The Samuel had a front end development. Uh, to be on newspapers and television in Bolivia. So what we basically really saw is that people are very feel very proud uh, that they have a public transport app in the city because it's modern. One person wrote on play, um, wrote a review. I feel like in US or Europe when I use the app, <laughs> which was somehow amazing because um, uh, yes, he just felt. Um, the digital benefit um, of of the app. So how can you bring Trophy app to my city? And actually, that's the central point of my uh, of what I wanted to say uh, in the session. Um, but I felt like I had to explain in the in the beginning what it is what it all is about. So you have to start collecting um, bus lines um, and digitizing them to OpenStreetMap. So I ask around uh, where where already, um, d- yeah, t- um, timetables and routes exist. Um, then you have to create a GTFS with our tool set, uh, or with OSM to GTFS, which is another wonderful project um, that does the same thing more or less. Um, you have to provide an OTP server to make door-to-door route plannings. Then you also can um, test it. Of course, there it's possible to make many errors on the way. So first you would test in this website if um, the trip planning works well, and then you can also customize, then you can take Trophy um, Core uh, from GitHub and customize it um, 
to your city and use your own open trip planner. Of course, there's much more to do. Um, uh, so you can, you should get in t contact with us so um, that we can help you. Um, uh, you should put together a local team because so many different skills are needed from marketing, project management, um, development, etc. And um, you should also look for uh, specific features that are important in your city. Um, like the example uh, that we um, enable navigation to intersections. Maybe there's something totally different in your city that needs to be done so that users really um, feel it's useful. Also, you should look for user experience, your uh, user interface, what's, what's best, which language to add, um, and how to finance server and map costs. You should do marketing. Well, release the app talk to governments, authorities, run analysis. And in the end, you can also help to maintain the OpenStreetMap routes. I think what's really essential to do was on the slide before. Um, that's like the very basics. Um, but I think that the steps on this slide really make sense um, if, it's, uh, if, if you want to make it really something uh, with a big benefit for your city. Last but not least, you have to know the technology stack. So OpenStreetMap is the basis, um, the streets, the crossings, the points of interest, um, but also the bus routes. Um, we have our tooling to create GTFS and to check the OSM OpenStreetMap lines. Then uh, the GTFS needs to be created and needs to be published to OpenTripLanner uh, to do the journey planning. On the top, there's the Flutter app, the user interface um, that needs to call these different things. Main part of the app is obviously the map itself. Uh, of the app is the map you're working on. So there you need to use op uh, map tiler or open map tile server um, to provide the apps, the maps. We'd be happy if you if you are interested and if you could join us, we're looking for volunteering experts worldwide that work on topics, uh, on all the topics you could imagine maybe now. We look for funding organizations um, so that we can pay specific tasks uh, in the NGO, but also um, in, the, in the local communities to make the app as useful as possible. Um, we look for cities that need mobility as a service solutions and are interested in Trophy. We're looking for local communities that want to bring Trophy into their city. Thank you very much for listening. I'm looking forward uh, to your questions um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Thanks. One. Thank you very much, Christoph, for your, for your talk, for your very interesting presentation of this application. We have lots of questions that we are going to, to answer. We have also, in this Q&A, there is also the presence of someone that we saw also in the video, that is one of the head developer of uh, this of the application. So we, are, we start with some questions. We have, I saw that also in the pod, one of you, your member of the Truth Association, start to reply. I stop it because we we have a lot of time to reply to all the questions that appear. So we have time. If you know, if you don't know, there is also a possibility to 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 direct reply from Sorens. So the first question is about GTFS. That I saw that at the end you spoke about it, but maybe the question was done before. So they say uh, general transit feed specification standard demand boost stop. The, do you work with the standards? How do you manage these requirements? If you want, there is also just the reply. If you don't know the reply, there is just there is written also the reply in the pad. <laughs> so I should maybe just read out. Um, so uh, we use open uh, standards everywhere. Our our app is open source. Um, all we do is open data as well. So we use GTFS, um, and actually it's run on Open Trip Planner to make uh, results. And we used. In the beginning, we just created virtual stops on all intersections. Um, like I say in the presentation, there are no, often no real stops in the cities. Um, so we created virtual stops on all intersections so that you could just uh, navigate there. 
Um, and then one city, I think it's Addis Abeba, Yeneguso, um, based on Trophy, um, is already having GTFS flags. And we want to use this also for the others because it's exactly made for informal transit um, so that people can everywhere, like that people just know in this kind of transport, I can just say, hey, I want to stop here. I want to enter here. Um, so yes, we are on that. So there is also a similar question that require if you are using uh, Flex uh, G GTFS Flex and you just reply that is the, the answer is yes. Yeah, Samuel, so, was that correct? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, cool. <laughs> okay. So I brought Samuel with me. He's uh, one of the founders. Uh, with him, a Trophy App would not exist. Um, he um, had been joining Trophy App from the beginning. He wrote his own uh, journey planner three years ago in Cochabamba, Bolivia, together with friends. He joined our team. Um, he became part of the OpenStreetMap community. And that's also the perfect example how we at Trophy want to work with communities. So we have uh, we are um, we have a technology provider, but we really need local communities like Samuel in Cochabamba with his team and in other cities um, that yeah that uh, collect the data, bring it to OpenStreetMap, and and think about the really cool features uh, that the app needs. So I brought him with me. So in case I have technical questions or OpenStreet yeah map questions, he can answer. Okay, perfect. So we go directly to the, to the second question that is also more general. That is, you in your um, in your talk, you talk about digital principles. In particular, you say that, that you are developing a, a, a following these digital principles. Are someone put a link to a website, digitalprincipes.org? Is that the, 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 idea, the idea of the digital principles that you would like to follow? Yeah, exactly. So, um... The digital principles are very interesting. It's made for um, develop for for development. Um, so to have sustainable apps that work in the long run, um, and the principles are that you design with the user, and that's exactly what we do with the. Um, so we 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 really started in Cochabamba asking the passengers how they how the the app has to be. So we really designed with the users, and that's what we want to do in all the cities. Then it's understanding the existing ecosystem. Um, what we do, because we really collaborate with people, we customize the app. So it's a white label app. So each city has a different app, actually a copy of the app or a fork, um, so that it's really suitable for the people that use it. Um, not only colors, but also language and maybe additional features. Then a principle is designed for scale. And that's obvious because we our app is white label, so it can scale out. Uh, it's built for sustainability, it's data driven, we use open standards, it's, um, it's for reuse and improve address privacy. So we wouldn't track um, a user um, or like we couldn't track down to a sp specific user or something. Uh, and these are like the digital principles that also we say we, uh, we support them. Okay, perfect. So we have a question that also was replied at the end, but I know that the people that make the question is really interested in the reply and can also help you. The question is, which are the country in which you are in Africa is working the application that was partially replied that are Ghana and Ethiopia. And in particular, there was a question about uh, Tanzania, if there is something that is developed. And the question was, I don't know if you know, there is uh, this project Crow to Map Tanzania that is lead part of uh, the, the, one of the leaders is Janet Chapman that is very it's a very big project and very wonderful project and maybe this is uh, the, the other question that was making co connect to this is which is the level of technical expertise that is needed to develop to, 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 to for the for the process mm -hmm. good um so we are in uh, Ghana and Addis oh we are in Accra uh, with Trotro app um and with Yenigusu app in Addis Abeba uh, we are not in Tanzania yet or not in any other African city. So we are talking with some communities. So whoever has asked the question is very welcome to approach us because I think there are very good um, mapping projects out there uh, where Trophy could be a puzzle piece in, in, in their project. So not only collecting data, but also having a journey plan in the end uh, that could be distributed um, that could be published. So from the technical expertise that you would need, um, the most obvious is the user interface, which is uh, written in Flutter. 
um, a Google technology which makes cross-platform or which is cross-platform development for iPhones and for Androids. And um, and then also you have to know like backend technology, Open Trip Planner. You have to be familiar with GTFS. Um, but the good thing is we have uh, open source tools from OSM to GTFS. Actually, there's a very good one that I mentioned in the presentation. It's called OS, uh, OSM to GTFS. Um, but we have our own one, which is a bit special and and like customized for for Trophy App. Um, so we have tools for that, um, and of course we can help on the whole journey. Okay, thank you, Samuel. Have I forgotten any technology that would be very useful? To me? Uh, no, I think that that that's all you need for for create your own fork of Trophy. Okay. Okay. So we have us uh, coming back to the to the GTFS. The, the request, there is a question about how the, the bus routes are created. If and the, the question says, you create the GTFS from OSM routes, do you create the routes ma manually with Chosm? How this process could work? Will work? Oh, that's a good question for you, Samuel. OK, so we create the, uh, OK, we start collecting the routes from everywhere, uh, from the users, from the uh, government documentations from 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 some books or from especially from the agencies so then we collect it and and then use uh, an other tools like uh, google my maps for 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 generate the the path and and then we use uh, just some for 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 put all routes inside the to osm for JSON, we have some uh, some extra tools because uh, not all users are, are experts using uh, JSON, so we create the own extra tools for facilitated. So, uh, like uh, some some presets that that's what we need, especially on the on on the mapping. Then that's all uh, what we use for for um, adding routes on the OSM. So basically the process is collecting the data using an other extra tool for generate the path, then use this path to, to, to put the data into the, the OSM. By the way, there's a Søren, a colleague of us, uh, will have a presentation in around four and a half hours, uh, eight o'clock UTC, on how to document bus lines uh, on open in OpenStreetMap so that it can be used by Trophy or other um, tools. OK, perfect. So we have uh, some questions that are all related. So we are, there is a question that is, why there is the, um, the, the, the you, pro, you propose the idea that the, the app is not, there is not one unique application, but there are multiple applications that are the fork of the, say, an original one, a starting one. Why there is this, this idea? And uh, do I have to download a separate application for every city, or I can use one everywhere? And a question related to this: these applications are available on F Droid, that is a platform for uh, for Android uh, downloading of application. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, we have a, a separate app in each city um, because we believe uh, that each city has uh, a different. User use apps differently. They need different features, um, so they need their own app. Um, so that's definitely the case. Um, so you would have to install the different apps. But of course, let's say if we have, uh, if we, if we, if if different cities, um, for example, Duitama in Colombia as an example, uh, two other cities in the same region want to have the app as well. So then the whole region could also have. Um, an app together, which may allows them to hop between cities or use the same city when, wherever they travel. So Trophy app could work in a city or in a region or even in a whole country. Actually, we thought about Trophy world. <laughs> so then you could just like navigate everywhere. But um, the basic idea is really like having a unique app customized for a specific community for a specific kind of user. Um, and it's not running yet on F-Droid. Um, I, I, I got this question already sometime, and I remember there was some challenges, but I don't remember what the challenges were. But maybe it's only something someone has to do. 
Thank you very much. We have five, say, five few minutes remaining for the lot of questions that are remaining. That are remaining. So I suggest you after to you ask also you, have, you put. I don't. I don't see the end of the talk. But if, if you put a reference to where people can ask to you how to reach you, since there are many some other uh, community like uh, Crotum Up Tanzania that are interested in the application, there is some way that w they can link to you. There is. I don't know, something that they, they can point to you. And after, I will just make one of the last questions that is a few questions remaining. I saw that there is Enoch, I think that also is, is from Trufi that is replying to some question that I suggest you also after the finish of the talk to go and to check the, the remaining question to, to, make, to have multiple replies. There is just one fun question that is uh, the, the word tr Trufi is something meaning meaningful. There is some, that depends on something or is... Uh, a general word. Uh, Samuel? Uh, sorry? Mm -hmm. uh, trophy, what does trophy mean? Uh, trophy means basically, uh, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Trophy. trophy means trophy. <laughs> yeah, Tro because that, that, that's the uh, locally words. Uh, that's basically, um, uh, in in Spanish, which is called uh, tran tra transporte de ruta fija. That's that's basically a, a static transport, <laughs> something like that. But that's locally from, from my city, especially yeah. from my country. It's so, a specific word of uh, exactly. So that's how the minibuses are called trophies. So therefore, it's trotro app in in Accra because the buses are called trotros. Um, and so uh, it's Jeepney app in Manila that we are planning, Daladala app in Tanzania, Matatu app in Kenya. So we really think about like using the local language. I Change the name. Of, yeah. Change the name according to where we are going to. The, the, the exactly. Application. Exactly. So just our association had to pick one name and we said Bolivia is the start. So we call ourselves Trophy. Okay. Just the last question, because I found very interesting, and after we have finished our time, uh, there is some issue when the, there is not internet connectivity in some place uh, where the bus have to go. Sorry? There are, there are some issues related to the internet connectivity. Is something that is required by the application? Just a few words, because we have less time, really. Mm. Like offline mode, that it works offline? Yeah, there is, yes, something yes. like There is some aspect. Uh, yeah, that, that's a big challenge. We really tried from the beginning, um, but it was very difficult to, to get this done. Uh, we would have to implement our own search algorithm to the app. Actually, Samuel has done this with his own app. <laughs> uh, so it's, uh, it's on the feature list for later. Uh, I really like all the questions. Uh, very interesting. Going to answer them in the panel. And please write me an email. So it's very easy. Just, go, just search for Trophy Association. You find contact. Please write me. Um, and don't forget, in four and a half hours, Søren is talking about how bus routes can be added to OpenStreetMap so that Trophy works. Thank you very much, uh, Christoph and Samuel. Very interesting talk. Like, there, there, are, there was a lot of interesting questions because the talk was very interesting and very uh, interesting project. So thanks to all. And it's a reminder for uh, another the, the following talk that there is in, in later. Bye. Cool. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.